angle here today. This is my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum. Kimmy, known to me as Kimmy here. Holcoglossum Kimberlianum is a bit of a mouthful. Thank you for being here, watching me do an orchid top cleanup. Pros and cons of orchid tops. I love them. That's a pro. They are beautifully styled. A lot of aeration inorganic or organic media it doesn't really matter either way they work superbly the history behind them is that the designer had a mom who was always struggling with phalaenopsis orchids and he decided to create a pot that would meet all the requirements of orchids with regards to aeration around the roots but also being in a media that would dry out quickly in my case, you know that I like to work with LECA and self-watering semi-hydro or lava rock or ceramics. But in some orchids and in some cases, especially for me, the angrecoids work super well with orchid top because I kind of get the best of both worlds. The dish below being the water reservoir. And if you have roots long enough, that is where they should be potted. No media first. The roots straight down into the bottom of the pot and then fill up so that the water reservoir down starts to wick. But here's a con. Look at this. I mean, it's wonderful in the summer with all this moss growing. I have no problem with that. I prefer clear. I could have gotten white, but I preferred the clear version. And then you see a lot of muck as well. So I'm going to clean that up because the Holcoglossum could take it. There's not that much down there that can get damaged. There's a bit of moss growing up into the stem there, so I'll just take care of that. The thing is though, when the birds start picking away at your moss, looking for worms, it's a sure sign that it is way, way too thick. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the process of how I clean my orchid tops, and then we'll discuss some more pros and cons. So I'm hoping that the angle will help. I've got two things working against me this time of year. I've got a lot of wind and I have the angle of the sun coming down at a specific that makes the lens go all fuzzy. So I'm going to try and work around that by changing the angle of the table. I'm just going to take a layer of this moss off on the outside. So another pro about this is that repotting is hardly ever necessary and that's why it is so awesome for angrecoids that have a reputation for not liking their roots disturbed. And what you do with regards to no root disturbance on an angrecoid is put it in a pot where you don't have to disturb the roots and they can go their merry way into the pot and around it's absolutely a perfect, perfect setup for angrecoids. I grow my angrecoids in lava rock, ceramics, and leca mix in orchid tops. The con that I can think of is that these are super expensive for a large collection. Big angrecoids, if this is something that is of interest, beware. They don't have XXL, they have large, medium, and small. I'll insert some pictures of my other angrecoids in this setup, but they, I find them extremely expensive. Imagine if you wanted to put all your Phalaenopsis into these pots. They are not cheap. I'll also link their website below. I don't know how it is in the United States. I know you can get them there but uh, I find them a little bit too pricey. So I'm just going to reduce the amount of moss around the base a little bit. I want to see that the stem of my Holcoglossum, the main stem is not being encroached upon. I'm not gonna take it all off, but just down here before it gets too high and I lose control and then I lose one of the branching plants that grew. This one is branched off this one from the mother stem. I don't want to lose that. 
Now, because of this kind of an orchid, I have to spray a lot, even in winter, because the roots are not down. At the beginning, they were not down in the media. So they grew them, their way in. I've had this orchid now almost three years. They grew their way into the media and into the moss. And I'm going to maintain some of that down there because it really helps me. It's, that's the sponge I need so that I don't have to be too aggressive about watering my Holka blossom here. And because it is one of those high humidity requirement ones, I can't really provide that in my climate. So this moss, I always welcome it when it comes, but it's time to get, put it a little bit into check because it will grow back pretty, pretty fast. And like I said, when birds come at it looking for worms, that is probably a good time to have a look-see as to how thick is my moss. Roots that have grown into the moss, I'm going to leave moss there. That's their environment. That's what they like. I don't want them to stop. Just making sure that I get into the stem a little bit better. Just around the bottom here. This orchid has never bloomed for me. I have gotten some good culture advice from artwork and orchids. I have not had the guts to expose this orchid to those temperatures. Just like the mid 40 degree Fahrenheit mark. To me that is about 12, I think if I remember correctly, that's about 12 degrees Celsius. So. This year, she has already had two nights in single figures. And the thought is that she needs it to be a little bit colder in order to induce blooms. Now, I will be watching closely the temperatures outside and bring her in if I get nervous. But so far, I've had the courage for the two di single digit nights to leave her outside. Well, we'll see if we get some blooms, but basically, what I'm going to do, the advantage of Orchid Top, is that this little plate comes off quite easily. And then you can see roots growing into the water, which is great. So we need to be careful there when we're cleaning up. But you can see that because of the culture and the setup, it actually gets very gunky. And this is six months of gunk in the plate. So normally I'm in the kitchen doing this, but then I wouldn't be able to take you into the kitchen because my kitchen hasn't got a, a wide enough setup in order to show you properly. So what I'm going to do here, improvise a little bit, get the nozzle on full and make a mess. Just get some of the heavier stuff off. and give it a wash. So this looks clean. There will always be some residue. That's the downside. Can't really always get into every nook and cranny. At least I don't succeed. But what I want to show you also is these black dots down here. They are from the metal that is holding the choya log into position through the holes of the orchid top. But you get the point. It's for aesthetical purposes while I can and it's super easy to clean. I may have some mineral residue around the edges. I'm not concerned about that. I could get rid of it with vinegar, but I'm a little bit worried how this material would respond to getting like the cleaning vinegar on it if it would start to go matte. 
Now I'm going to watch out for the roots that are coming through, but I do want to brush off the sides just a little bit. With the orchids that I can still do this with, I do it. And you see that choya log is really well attached to the bottom of the pot with a wire. Otherwise, this whole thing would be collapsing by now. I don't have any soap in this bucket at all. I'm just using plain water, not even RO water. So it's very difficult for me to see while all the bars are wet if I have gotten all the mineral deposits off the side. But once it dries, I'll get a better idea. And if I need to, I'll just touch it up again a little bit more. Let me get in a little bit closer and show you, if I can. So you can see how the roots grow through and down into the plate area. It's nice to see this root action down here. I have to be careful with that root tip. I touched it. I hope I didn't destroy it. So for this year, it was still quite easy. You can see the root tips in there. It was quite easy still to take care of this orchid with the plate. And I'm going to show you what I do as well with orchids where I can't do, I can't just take the plate off anymore without possibly risking my roots. So I'm just gonna jet this down one more time from the side. always mindful of the roots. I mean, you know, if something happens, she has plenty of roots, but why, why risk it? Just a little bit of careful attention to them. I love seeing them go down and I'm hoping that one day I don't, I'm not, won't be able to take the plate off, which makes maintenance a little bit more difficult, but it's great for the orchid if those roots can go into the plate and stay there, because then I have water roots, which is superb for this orchid for the summer months. And I can control how much water is in the tray at any given time during the winter. So I'm working towards that. And that is another big advantage of this setup. Really have good control for watering orchids and it doesn't just the vandacious types. Like I said, the designer and owner of these, he constructed them, came up with the idea because his mom was always so disappointed when she took another orchid down. And then it just slots back into place and it's nice and clean again. And that is how I like my Kimmy to be, nice and clean. So what happens though, if there's a root mess down here and you can't, at the end of the day, ideally, then it's going to be risk a root, snap a root, stop root growth by removing the tray. I go about it exactly with what you've just seen just now. I take my sprayer, this is plain RO water, and I just really attack everything around the base and with a very, very strong jet. I do that several times to get debris off. Now we have cleaned the plate, so there's not that much to do anymore. But if this were to be, and I will show you my Crestwood Tomorrow Star as we finish off this video, if this is my Crestwood Tomorrow Star, then I do exactly what I'm doing now. Jet spray, pour. Jet spray, pour. Where I can get a toothbrush in, I will tease a little bit away 
you know, any crusty, any residue, any kind of mineral buildup. But basically my spray, my sprayer here is the one that does the job. And also in the tray, if there were all the crusties in there and the debris that I couldn't get off, spray, pour, spray, pour. It's a bit tedious, but it saves the roots. So I'm going to take you and show you my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. I did that one, oh, maybe three weeks ago. We'll see what it looks like now. So we're inside now, but that is where this Crestwood is living until blooming is done and the temperatures outside rise again. And you can see here the root growth in the pot. Let me go around the top and show you how they're curling in and out. You can see the mineral deposit. So I go with a toothbrush and scrub in to those areas where I can get at to release that mineral deposit and really jet stream down the inside to somehow remove whatever accumulates there over a long period of time because the roots are in there now curling their way around and I have no idea if they're under and through the bottom of the pot, which would cause a problem when I take the base off. That is a con. Not a con as in a trick, but it is a negative in my books because of the fact that it is now very, very difficult to clean. So this is three weeks ago. And that is King, if you heard him. He's outside barking, wanting in. He can wait a little bit. But yeah, this is my Crestwood Tomorrow Star, and I'm not going to be taking it outside to be so radical with the spraying, because it is in spike. And the in and out, the cleaning in and out, going back and forth, it could probably provoke bud blast, and I would like to avoid that if I make if I can't get this orchid to bloom this time around, I want to know that it was because it was still too young, not because I was moving it back and forth. That is how I clean my orchid tops and how I work around getting them to at least be a great environment for my angrecoids and especially the Kimberlianum. I really appreciate the time you took to watch the video. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for being here, for subscribing, and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Take good care, stay safe, bye.